We're back in a new Discovery Channel documentary. Astrophysicist Stephen Hawking said that communicating with aliens could be a threat to Earth. Hawking says it's likely that alien life exists and that a visit from extraterrestrials might be similar to Columbus's arrival in the Americas. In other words, didn't turn out too well for Native Americans. Joining us are Dr. Michio Kaku, futurist, physicist, best-selling author of his newest book, Physics of the Impossible, a scientific exploration of the world of phasers, force fields, teleportation, and time travel. Seth Shostak, senior astronomer of the Setai Institute. David Brin, astronomer and futurist. And of course, our friend, the well-known actor, Dan Aykroyd, who believes that alien life exists. We wanted to hear directly from the renowned British scientist, former guest on this program, author Stephen Hawking, about his controversial claims. So I sent him some questions. Here are his answers. Do you think there will ever be direct contact between the inhabitants of Earth and alien life. It's nice to see you again, Larry, after 10 years. Yeah. I think we may find primitive life, but it's unlikely there are intelligent aliens within 100 light years, or we would have detected their radio signals. If contact does occur, will it, do you think it'll be initiated by us or by them? They are likely to be more advanced than us, so they will contact us first. You're, you're warning that it may be too risky to try to contact space aliens has stirred a lot of debate. Do you care to react to some of the criticism, those who say the search for extraterrestrial life is central to space exploration? I think we should look out for primitive life. If advanced life exists, they'll contact us. Aliens haven't contacted us so far, except maybe in the state of Arizona. <laughs> in your mind, what, what would an advanced alien look like? They are bound to have a mouth opening, because they will have to take in nutrition. And they will probably have legs, because they will need to move around. And they'll need eyes. But don't expect them to look like Marilyn Monroe. Should we ban messages into the universe for fear of attracting dangerous aliens? It is too late. If they are looking, they will already have detected us. Thanks for joining us, Stephen Hawking. Goodbye, Larry. I hope to see you this fall when my new book with Leonard Mladenov, The Grand Design, is released. Thank you. What do you make of his thinking? I think, first of all, don't quit your day job, Larry. <laughs> don't sell the store. The aliens are not going to invade anytime soon. But I think what Stephen is doing is giving us a wake-up call. You know, in the next few months to the next few years, we have two satellites out there that are going to detect Earth-like twins in outer space, maybe with liquid oceans, maybe with life on them. When we look at the night sky in the next few years, we're going to get happy have to get used to the fact that somebody could be staring back at us. We're going to have an existential shock when the results of the Kepler satellite and the Kuros satellite announce they have found Earth-like planets in space. Uh, Seth Shostak, you buy it? Well, of course I'd buy that, but look, I think what Stephen Hawking is saying, we're going to hear from them first, and that's exactly what we try and do in the SETI business. Indeed, we're, we've got big antennas that are scanning the skies, looking for signals from civilizations that would be quite far away. There's no danger in that, of course. I mean, you tune in the radio, and you don't have to worry about the DJ jumping into your home and giving you a hard time. So that's a completely harmless sort of thing, and a very interesting thing, because it would tell you whether Earth is really, really special, or whether there's enormous quantities of life out there. But, David, one thing it has done, with Stephen Hawking talking about it, it has opened many eyes, hasn't it? Oh, yes. The problem is that everybody seems to have their own idea of, of course, what aliens ought to be like. We all say, of course, our broadcasts have been already been detected by now. Uh, when Seth himself has calculated, and most of the astronomers have calculated, that our TV broadcasts actually dissipate pretty soon after they leave our solar system. It's these narrow beams that are being sent out from taxpayer-paid observatories, 
like Arecibo and Ev Pretoria in Ukraine that are causing the fuss without consulting the taxpayers, without consulting the governments, without consulting fellow scientists at all in other disciplines. These people have taken upon themselves to act on their assumptions that aliens are universally altruistic. And it's not so much the beamed messages that we object to, those of us who've been dissenting lately, but rather the arrogance of not talking to anybody else on this planet before assuming they have uh -huh. the right to do this. And what, by the way, the images you're seeing are, of course, images and imaginations. All right, Dan, how do you, how do you contrast with David Brin, who's saying that, what, what do you really know? Uh, well, thank you for including a, a Hollywood uh, constituent here. I'm the MUFON uh, consultant for Hollywood MUFON Mutual UFO Network, so I have to speak for the Mu MUFON people today and also for uh, Hollywood. We've made some pretty good movies about this. E.T., Close Encounters, Indiana Jones, Crystal Skull, uh, also Coneheads, and uh, Day the Earth Stood Still 1 and 2. The significance of the Hawking uh, speech that I heard was that he specifically referenced a July 1952 sighting over the United States Coast Guard Station in Washington, D.C. No astrophysicist of his credibility and reputation has ever actually mentioned a UFO sighting. So to us in that community, we sit up right away and what we say is, SETI, please continue. Maybe focus in on where there might be planets. Please continue, but please also accept the fact that they may have been coming and going here for many years without calling SETI back. In fact, I believe they're in violation of Title 18, Section 1202, Paragraph A of the United States Code, which says whoever abducts someone for ransom or otherwise is liable to criminal prosecution. And if you know the story of Barney and Betty Hill, Stanton Friedman's book, Captured, uh, Travis Walton, Herb Shermer, the Nebraska Highway Patrolman, uh, he spoke of reputable witnesses hawking. That would be uh, Callahan of the FLA. Okay, FAA. Dan, I gotta get uh, a break. You're, you're making okay. a strong point. One question right. I always ask was, why do they land in Wyoming? Why not New York, Washington, I'll tell you that later. All right. I have Chicago? Maybe we'll get answers ahead.